All right. Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Paul Thomas. Um, I'm talking about how to get yourself on TV, building your brand and telling your story. And this is going to be a lot about process. And some of it's going to be the end result of that process. I'm going to show you five crucial ways to get yourself on television. And that's going to come after the process. So welcome to my presentation. Let's get this thing going here. So my name is Dr. Paul Thomas. I started Plum Health DPC here in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I did a TED talk about what I believe, what the way healthcare should be. And I really believe that healthcare should be affordable and accessible for everyone. Uh, we deliver that care here in Detroit and we make house calls. We see people in the office. I've written a book about my beliefs and that's led me into some cool platforms. It's opened some interesting doors for me. Uh, I got an invite to the White House recently and um, I was named Entrepreneur of the Year here in Detroit via the Vanguard Awards. So that's a pretty tremendous honor. Um, and I wanna show you that you can be the person who gets on TV. You can be the person who gets the media attention that you deserve, because if you truly believe that you're serving people, lowering the cost of healthcare and helping solve these healthcare crises in America, you, sh you deserve to be there. I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? So we're gonna describe why it's important to build a personal brand, uh, to grow your practice, uh, so that you're easy to identify, so you can get featured in your local or national news media, so you can build rapport with your patients. And DBC doctors with a strong brand can attract potential patients, can att uh, attract potential partners and the media attention that they deserve. So let's start with some myths. Personal branding is scary or uncomfortable. And I'm guessing many of you DPC docs are not embracing personal branding because it may seem foreign to you. Um, the other myth is, I'm a doctor, isn't that good enough? You know, you're a doctor and the merits of doctor, being a doctor should be good enough to fill your panel, attract a practice partner or employees, and maybe even get some media attention. I'm just saying that's not true. The, the fact is the market is fiercely competitive. Um, you're competing with the big box pharmacies, the minute clinics, telehealth, the large fee-for-service juggernauts, and the acupuncturists, chiropractors, personal coaches, et cetera, okay? So... This is what you're competing with, CVS Minute Clinics, Walmart Health. These are some juggernauts, and they're going to be able to command a lot of media attention. So your tr the truth is your market doesn't know you. Uh, they don't know who you are and what you do. And this is going to be your average direct primary care consumer or the average patient in your computer uh, com community. And they're going to say, you know, what's direct primary care? They don't really know what this is. So you have to get out there and show them what it is. So the truth is a strong personal brand can help you succeed because in this insanely competitive market, you can build a strong personal brand, a brand to grow your practice and attract media attention. And it all starts with building trust, building trust and rapport with your audience. So let's stop here, take a short poll. I like to be a little bit interactive. What's the demand like for your practice? Tell me, are, do you, are you full and do you have a wait list? Are people banging down the door and are you having a hard time keeping up? Um, do you have a steady stream of enrollees, but you want more? You have modest growth or are you struggling to get anyone through the door? So show me some letters up there. And uh, okay, so we're seeing some Ds, we're seeing some Cs. Thank you for the feedback, I love it. We got an A up there, okay. We got some Ds and Cs coming through, a couple of Bs in there. Corey, great job with the A. All right, beautiful. So the next one is, how do you feel about personal branding? Do you embrace it? Are you able to communicate your mission, vision, values with your community? Are you indifferent? Are you unfamiliar? Or do you just not think it's necessary to be successful and therefore you don't do it? If you are embracing it, I'm gonna show you some tools to refine that and, and augment that. And if you're not, I'm gonna show you how you can leverage these different tools and resources. Okay, so um, you know, personal brand, building a personal brand is all the rage right now, um, but personal brands have always been around. They used to just be called something else, and that word is character. And so as a doctor, I know that you have great character. Um, you've done the 36-hour call. You've taken care of people when they have needed it the most. You've been there in their corner to help them uh, when at, at their darkest hour, okay? So it's what you do when no one's watching, and you've put in those long hours to, to create value for other people. So I'm gonna give you a little secret. Your personal brand is character, plus communication, okay? So you have great character and I wanna help you communicate it. And to do that, we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise. I want some like visceral reactions. I'm gonna show some, 
some doctors here, and I want you to, to see how you feel about these different docs. So um, how do you feel about Dr. Phil? How about uh, Dr. Oz? How about Dr. Jerome Adams? He's our US Surgeon General. Oh man, we're getting a lot of hate for uh, Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz here. Um, how about Z-Dog MD? You know, we love Z-Dog MD because he comes out here, he speaks truth to power, He's totally authentic and we love him for it. Thanks for being here, Z-Dog. Yeah, and a lot of people like that too. All right, Dr. Sandra Lee, AKA Dr. Pimple Popper. Okay, so, um, and last one, Dr. Dre, anybody? Dr. Dre, six time Grammy winner, winner. Okay, so I had a little fun with this and I hope you did too, but it, it goes to show a, a point that a brand is the most valuable real estate in the world because it's the corner of somebody's mind. What do, what do people think of when they think of you? When, when they think of you, you know, Dr. Smith, Dr. Thomas, Dr. X or Y, you know, what do they think about? So brand is a set of expectations, memory, stories, and relationships that taken together account for a consumer's de decision to choose one product or service over the other. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my personal brand. I advocate for affordable and accessible healthcare I also, I'm relentlessly positive, if you know anything about me. I, I share uplifting stories about Detroit. I'm authentic, genuine, sincere, and I communicate health information in a fun way. Okay, and then also, I don't, I don't share anything that would be objectionable to this woman. Uh, this is Lisa, uh, she's my mom, so, and she's also one of my biggest fans on social media. So shout out if you love your mom, uh, give me some love in the comments, and, and she's, She's really super supportive. So anything I post, I'm not gonna like make, I wanna make my family proud, you know? So a brand is the sum total of how somebody perceives a particular organization. Branding is about shaping that perception. So I'm gonna show you how to brand yourself as a doctor. So when things come up, when you do your work, when you take care of a newborn baby, you can share that on your Instagram or on your Facebook. People love to see you doing your work and it doesn't have to be crazy. You know, one of our patients came in, she's a blogger. She asked to take a photo of me with her daughter and this was our newest patient. So I said, welcome to the Plum Pack, Zaya. Love to have you here. Uh, somebody came in with a lip laceration. I asked if I could take a before and after. I did, this, this did really well on our social channels. I delivered a medication by bicycle. My patient took a photo of it because he was just flabbergasted. Um, I put that up on the socials. I, I go out and speak in the community to children about careers in medicine. I put this up on my blog, I shared it on LinkedIn, and actually the Lieutenant Governor in, in Michigan is Garland Gilchrist, and he left a comment and he said, my mom, my grandmother taught there for 30 years, so that was really cool to connect with him that way, we talked about it the next time we met up. You know, when, when you hit a milestone in your practice, 200 patients, 250 patients, buy some giant balloons, it costs like 18 or $30, and you can showcase you know, this is for Dr. Raquel. She had 200 patients a few months ago. We had a nice celebration for her to showcase her achievement. And we love that. Chris, our medical assistant, we had a little bet going with one of our patients. He said, I bet you're gonna make me bruise. And he said, I bet I won't. There was a plate of cookies on the line and he could see who won. Chris, our MA, coming through with the white chocolate macadamia. We love that. And then I, I recently spoke to our uh, medical school here in Detroit, Wayne State. I told them Detroit's big enough uh, to matter in the world and small enough for you to matter in it. So I showed them how they could have an impact here. And so these are the ways that you can showcase who you are. You know, we did this men's health event at, at Ford Field where the Lions play. They let me go on the field and kick a couple field goals. I had a lot of fun with that. If you're consistent, if you communicate uh, to the world your value, just in little ways, this is not anything major. There are no professional photographers here. There's hardly any videos. Just a couple snapshots can really communicate your value, okay? So, so this is the last example I'll give, um, but this is me making a house call, and I put this up on my um, Instagram. It did okay, 233 likes, engagements. That's, that's fine, that's great. But then I put it up on my LinkedIn account, and it blew up. It got like 46, 47,000 different interactions. And it, it reached over a million people, 1.6 million people. This is the first thing I've ever had go viral. So it's kind of exciting for me. And, and so like, why do these things matter? Because you can reach a bigger audience, you can get more web traffic, more enrollments. 
and it can open bigger doors to bigger opportunities. So this is our web traffic after that post went viral on LinkedIn. We had 400 people come to our website um, and, and I work with Dr. Jamie and Dr. Raquel and I have a goal of helping them attract and retain new patients and this really helped. So, you know, we got about 40 new patients in 16 days mostly on the strength of that post where a lot of people were interacting with our brand because of it. And then this came out of the blue this week. So two days ago, I got this email and it says, hey, I'm a director of development at this production company and we're behind the award-winning shows of blank, blank, blank. I'm not sharing any of this information yet. Um, and, and they're doing some research and we'd love to tell some stories about your practice. I don't know if I'm gonna do this opportunity, but these are the things that can come up when you when you tell stories about yourself, about your business, about your brand, uh, people are going to reach out to you. So this is the first answer of how to get yourself on TV. You know, a journalist might reach out to you directly if you tell compelling stories where you demonstrate impact, where it matters for your community. You know, there aren't a lot of, there are zero other doctors making house calls in Detroit, Detroit that I know of. So this is one pathway. All right, let's go to the second pathway or sorry, on the theme of this, being a thought leader. So, you know, if you're a thought leader, if you're the go-to person, if you know a lot about healthcare or direct care or house calls or some other niche area, um, and you communicate that through your channels, people, journalists may reach out to you because you're a thought leader. You're the informed person. You're the go-to person. You're the trusted source who they can rely on for good information. All right, so I talked about personal brand is character plus communication. I'm also gonna talk about amplification. When you, uh, when you have connections on Facebook or on social media, on LinkedIn, people who love you, love what you do, or believe what you believe, they can amplify your messaging. For example, this is my prototypical patient. She doesn't say, I love my health system. She doesn't say, I love my health insurer. She doesn't say, I love my hospital. She does say, I love my doctor. I love Dr. Paul, I love Plum Health, okay? And so, when we share something like, you know, we're hiring a new doctor, you know, we get 21 shares, which helps us reach other people across, you know, across our social channels. And when somebody's looking for a doctor, they might name us to, to fill that need. Any recommendations for a good doctor in and around Detroit? And then somebody drops my name here at the bottom. So this happened for WDT. It's the NPR affiliate in our town. Face World, do you have a story about a, paying a ridiculous amount of money for medication? And this is posted by the producer of WDET. And, and somebody dropped us in the comments. They said, definitely check out Dr. Paul at Plum Health in the old 555 gallery. He's a primary care physician that provides prescriptions at cost, all caps, to his patients. Okay, so this guy amplified our message by reaching out to somebody who wasn't even in my network. And he landed us a spot on Detroit Today with Stephen Henderson. I brought my my uh, doctor's bag, I, I got my medications, and we talked about how we're saving people money on healthcare. So maybe someone in your ne network can connect you to a journalist. That's, that's option number two for, for getting this done. The, other, the third point is journalists are people too. You know, um, they have stories to tell, they're on a deadline. They're willing to feature you if you package it in the right way, if you communicate clearly and succinctly. And then if you follow them on social media, give them lots of love there, they can shout you out. So I follow this guy, um, he's a journalist, one of the most respected in Detroit, Devin Skillian. And, and we had a good conversation you know, on Twitter in the past and I shout him out when he ever, ever he goes on his program uh, talking about politics or healthcare or things like that, things that are interesting to me. And so when I published my book, I sent him a short email with a press release that said, hey Devin, I wanted to reach out because I'm, I just published a book and it's about the impact that we're having. And as you know, open enrollment's on the horizon. And I'd like to talk with you about how we're lowering healthcare costs. And so he said, Paul, would you be available uh, to come to Flashpoint next Wednesday, December 19th at 2.30 p.m.? And so I, I was like jumping up and down at this point, like so freaking excited. And then uh, I was on, on the program. They showcased my material. This is a huge boon for our practice. We got a ton of patients to come after this because it, it raises our brand value. It's, it gives us a lot of legitimacy. And then the payoff was that, you know, Devin Skillian is now tweeting at me, which is pretty epic. I love that. So um, three, you can regularly engage with the journalists work on Twitter. You know, journalists have to tweet X amount of time. So can you follow them and share a story with them that's adjacent to what they're concerned about? 
and maybe you can uh, enter their network. Next up, journalists are people part two. Okay, so anybody a big fan of the Detroit Tigers? Who's a, who's a big baseball fan here? Shout out your favorite team in the comments. I'm a diehard MLB Detroit Tigers fan. And uh, oh, we got some Giants, we got some Jays, we got some Go Tigers, Dodgers, Mariners, Red Sox. I love it, guys. Thank you. So there's a historic ballpark that used to be here called Tiger Stadium. It's amazing. And, um, you know, it was unfortunately closed in 1999. They tore it down and they built a youth sports arena and they built our building, the corner. And a journalist locally, JC, wrote an article that said, you know, apartments and condos are getting snapped up fast at the old Tiger Stadium site. And so I reached out to JC. I said, I recently read your article and I'm a family doc in Corktown and I'll be opening up a practice here. Would you be interested in writing about it? And he said, thank you for reaching out. I've been following your innovative practice for some time now and the upcoming move would be a great opportunity to do a story. And so we set a time, put it on the Google calendar. He came by in July and in August, we got on the front page of the Detroit Free Press, which was amazing. So, so maybe you reach out to a journalist who writes or produces a story that is adjacent to your area of concern. The fifth way I'm going to show you how to get onto TV or get into the media is by having a peg or a newsworthy event. Okay, so we're building out a new office and we started from a dirt floor. We had the contractors in, we, we poured it so we'd have sinks in our office and all the good stuff that makes it work. And uh, you know, I did some videos, I did some some social media engagement, but then we also wrote up a press release. Plum Health expands into a mixed use development at the former Tiger Stadium site in Corktown. And so we, we invited the mayor, we invited everybody from our community, we invited all of our patients, we got to give the mayor a tour, and uh, we just had a fabulous time with this. It was a packed house. Uh, this is pre-COVID, obviously, this is back in October. Um, and we cut the ribbon, and the ribbon cutting was a peg. You know, in journalist parlance, it's the peg where uh, people get excited about something important. How many of you are missing life pre-COVID? Leave some love in the comments. So this was a huge event, and and this got you know three different news media outlets uh, on on camera for TV only. So we had Fox Two, um, we had uh, Channel Seven, that's the ABC affiliate, came out, and then CBS Detroit came out as well, Channel Sixty Two here locally. And so having a newsworthy event, maybe you hire a doctor, maybe you open a new office, maybe it's your first year anniversary, maybe it's something important. You should write a press release, release for this and send it to all of your journalist contacts, all the people in your community. You can even send it to your patients and have them share it for you. And this is a great way to leverage your work. So create a newsworthy event and send a press release about that event. Um, so. A recap, we're winding down here. We got a couple of minutes left. News coverage can more easily communicate the value of your DPC model, and it can reach a broader audience beyond your social media platforms, beyond your listserv, beyond your current patients. News coverage allows your audience to see you as legitimate. News coverage allows you to build trust and rapport with your audience more easily. And like I said before, it's all about building trust. When people are trusting you with their most important commodity, their health, when they're able to trust you with that, they're going to be more likely to sign up for your service. I want you to leave with that, okay? So know the next steps in building your personal brand. Choose a medium that works best for you and your personality. Choose a medium that plays to your strengths and set goals on how to achieve the personal brand status that you want to have. And then leverage your personal brand to gain more customers and grow, to grow your practice. So pick a medium. For you, it might be a blog. For you, you might love YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram anything that you love to do that's going to work for you. Uh, we're not all painters. Some of us are sculptors. Some of us work with pottery. Some love pastels. You know, we're all different. So play to your strengths. Um, and then set goals. You know, how many posts are you going to have? Uh, is it a daily Instagram post, weekly Facebook live? Um, plan, execute, and be consistent. Okay. When you're on these, on these mediums, you want to be consistent, authentic, genuine, sincere. Um, I think ZDog MD is, does a great job of this. Um, you want to be a reliable, predictable, provide value. You want to be trustworthy and have a little fun with it. And so um, I write a lot about this in my book, Startup VPC. Um, thanks to everybody who's picked this up so far. If you want to learn more about me and my style, it's there. And then I also have a website, startupdpc.com, where I share some more tips and tricks for you. 
Um, and if you have questions, please hit me up at Plum Health DPC, Twitter, YouTube, or email. And uh, just as a bonus, you know, thank you for sticking with me to the end. They said there was no limit on the amount of confetti that I could use during this presentation. So here it goes. Thank you very much, everybody. That was awesome. Um, we had a few questions come through during the uh, during your speech. One person is wondering who takes all the photos for you at each event. Do you hire someone? Is it your staff? Okay, so usually I have a medical student or a resident who's with me working in the office, and oftentimes I just ask them to take a photo. Um, if we're in the office, I'll just ask my medical assistant to take a quick photo of me with other people. The only time I've hired a professional photographer was for a ribbon cutting ceremony because I thought it was so crucial to get amazing photos of that event, of that space. And so we did hire a professional photographer for that. And we that included a package of them taking photos of us when we first opened the office and coming to the ribbon cutting. So it was you know, a few thousand dollars to get all that in a package, but that's really the only time I've hired a professional photographer. Um, so that viral moment that you mentioned was really awesome, but that also came with a lot of consistency posting on social media for quite a long time, I'm sure. How sure. do you pragmatically manage, like, I have to do my post today, these are all the things that I have to get done, and make sure that that consistency keeps happening? Sure, I really just try to set aside one hour each week. And you know, if I can just get a photo from my phone, I take photos of my practice all the time. I ask patients if I can share it all the time. If I remove a toenail or drain an abscess, I'm gonna take a quick photo. I've always got something like that on my phone. If I meet with somebody important, I'll definitely get a photo. Or if I have a student shadowing with me or I'm teaching a class, I'll get a photo of something like that. So I've always got something. It might not have happened this week, but then each week I'll set aside a time, you know, maybe it's Saturday morning at 9 a.m. and I'll just say, okay, I got an hour, I'm gonna put this on Instagram and then write a blog post about it and then share it on other, my other social media channels. Usually it takes me about an hour, but I do that every week and it pays dividends over time. Great, and for those people who, unlike you, aren't just naturally outgoing as a matter of character, you talked a lot about being authentic to who you are, how would sure. you recommend they get comfortable telling their story regularly without deviating from who they are authentically? Sure, I think, you know, if you're introverted, you can use other ways. You know, if, if it's not uncomfortable for you to write a blog, you know, you can leverage a blog. If you blog every week, you're gonna develop a tremendous amount of search engine optimization or SEO to lead people back to your practice. Um, you know, you might need to lean into doing press releases or maybe when you can communicate with media, you maybe have one of your partners stand up and talk to the media or your medical assistant stand up and talk to the media. You know, there's other ways to do it, um, but if you're if you're just shying away from this completely, it's and you're having a hard time growing your practice, it's it's going to be problematic for you long term. And a uh, question from Dr. Bree: um, Do you get written consent from patients to post, and how do you kind of manage the privacy element of social media? Sure, um, I I get verbal consent, and usually if I'm sharing something about my patients, it's usually like a laceration, something that's small. The um, photo with a baby was unusual for me, but her mom is a, is a well-known blogger in the community. And so she took that, she actually took that photo and posted that on her social media channels first, and then shared with, that with me in an email that said, you know, I'd, I'd be happy if you could share this as well. So um, in, in a way it's written because it's in an e email. So there's some kind of paper trail there, but if I wouldn't ever post a photo of somebody without their permission. We have time to think for one, maybe two more questions. So someone Great. asked if you have ever done any radio. Yeah, I've done a lot of radio. Um, you know, there's a couple radio stations where I've been on a lot. Uh, WDT has actually had me on like five times. Um, wants to talk about DPC and about four times during the pandemic because I was putting out, I was putting out a video every week about the coronavirus and one of their uh, producers picked that up and invited me on to do some Q&A about coronavirus. Um, and then a couple other radio stations as well, CBS Radio here in Detroit, notably. It sounds like you learned a lot by yourself. So where do you go to learn some of these skills? Yeah, I definitely read a lot of business books about branding and marketing. So, you know, I know I'm not a business major or anything like that. So when I first started my practice, I read a ton of books. I read Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, 
I read a lot of Seth Godin's books. I read a lot by uh, Grant Cardone. And, and they talk a lot about branding and marketing explicitly and implicitly. So if you're looking for more, you know, that's there. And then I try to take a lot of that information and, you know, kind of hone it down into my book, the Startup DPC book, if anybody's interested in that as well. Great. Well, we're just about out of time. So um, check out Paul's book, Startup DPC. Is there a website they can find that on, Paul? Yeah, startupdpc.com. It's on Amazon if you're interested. Um, I'd love it if you give me some love there, drop a review for it. It goes a long way. Thank you so much, everybody. I sincerely appreciate it. And thank you, Hint Health, for having me here today.